here it is all finished and this is the other side with the tump line installed hello welcome to waypoint survival today i want to show you how i made the bushcraft backpack stay tuned So the first thing that I've got to locate is I've got to find a branch of a tree. Uh, you can see Spirit, <laughs> he decided to follow me into the woods. But I've got to find a branch of a tree or a small sapling that is of the proper diameter for me to whittle and carve. And it has to be flexible enough that it can bend. And so I'm going to be testing that and I'll show you uh, when I get it done. I'll find the one that I'm looking for and then I'll show you how we continue to process that to make the main part of our backpack and the curve for the top of the frame. I'm in an area of our woods that I call pole heaven because there's a ton of little saplings that grow in here and they really need to be thinned out so I get a lot of my project poles from this area and uh, for whatever reason because of the environment and proximity to the creek there's a lot of reasons why uh, these trees grow like this but most of them will never make it to maturity and so it's just good forestry practice to thin them out and so I come down here every once in a while like I said I've got hundreds maybe thousands of these poles and they're just scattered all over this area so uh, I'm gonna find the right one and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a pole that is about yay big in diameter so you know for those of you in the uh, inch system uh, it's about an inch inch and a half in diameter and a little taller than I am something that I can bend uh, with some heat I'm also looking for something that doesn't have a knot or a branch coming out where I need to bend it because that will uh, form a weak spot and cause it to crack so there's a lot of challenges in some ways this is one of the more difficult parts of the project is to find the exact tree fairly straight uh, not a lot of knots and, and of course what's great in this area is because there are so many poles each one of them is reaching skyward to get the light and so they tend to put fewer branches down in the bottom part of the trunk so you get a much straighter shot so that's what we're kind of looking for so this tree right here is a small maple and there's a lot of these little maple trees around here so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut it off close to the ground and uh, then I'll uh, shave off all the bark and I'll show you what that looks like using the uh, Gomboy 240 here. All right, so here it is. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it just below this branch here. It's much longer than what I need, but uh, I'll go ahead and resize that. And what I'm looking for is a long straight run because I don't want the sides of my backpack to be curved too much. All right, there we go. And then the rest of this I'll leave out here and uh, we can use this for other projects or for firewood. There's a lot of things, of course, that you can use maple for. All right, here we go. So it is considerably taller than I am right now, probably about eight feet tall, a lot longer than I need. But uh, I'm going to look at it close, size it down, and show you the finished product. Okay, so I've cut this off. It's about as tall as I am, so roughly six foot. And uh, all of these knobs and everything has to be shaved off. So we're going to start that process right now it will also have to be thinned down some so that's just part of the process but we have to start off with something that's thick enough so that when we go to mortise in the boards that go form the uh, back part of the slats for the supports that they don't break on us and that the pack will be sturdy enough when we set it down under weight that the legs that stick out the bottom underneath the pack won't snap off Okay, so I've got this trimmed from end to end, and I went ahead and shaved this side off to basically make it the same diameter as this side. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to find the exact center, and the easiest way to do that, as long as it's roughly the same length and uh, tapered to the same basic diameter, is you can kind of balance it on your finger. And where that balance point is, it's going to be pretty well the center. Now, it's not going to be perfect, and once we get this bended, we can trim off the bottom ends, of course, to match. But what we're going to do is we're going to find a tree, and we're going to go around the tree, and we're going to start 
bending it. We're gonna work the fibers and warm them up. It's cold out here and then I will finish the process uh, using some heat, uh, probably from a uh, map gas torch. And uh, I know that's not like you would do it over a fire. You could do it over a campfire. I just find that using a torch is a little quicker. All right, so what we do is we find a tree and I don't wanna get one that's real big in diameter like this one right here. Uh, so I'm gonna go to something that's probably about that big around and I'm gonna start bending this around a tree. This tree's about the right size and so I can get arms around it and uh, I'm just gonna literally just start by working it like this and you don't want to go too much at first uh, it will get more flexible but you want to work your way around kind of like if you're tillering a bow and uh, just keep working it and be careful you hear a little bit of a crack uh, that's all right uh, we're just trying to warm up the fibers and getting it where it will bend hopefully without breaking and this can take you a few minutes, but you can see I'm already getting uh, a, a little bit of working. I'm getting a couple of cracks in here. That's okay as long as it's not catastrophic because as long as we get a good bend, we're going to go ahead and wrap this center portion anyway where the top of the handle is. So I'll go ahead and work this, then I'll get back with you. All right, so we've got this pretty well bent into the shape that we want it. And uh, it did crack and split a lot, and I trimmed all that off. But as you can see, we now have a nice start to our frame. It's roughly the same length, and uh, we've got a little bit of an odd curve here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work that section a little bit more and uh, see if I can't flexible make that a little more flexible. And I uh, can always trim it a little bit more. But uh, that's basically what we're looking for, something like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got a little hank of bank line here with me. And I just made a, a slip knot. And I'm going to put it on here. And I'm going to pull these two ends together very carefully, of course. And then I'm just going to start wrapping it. And just going to wrap it just like this. You can see what that looks like. And I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. Just go around and around, working my way up, keeping tension on it. Once you get a few wraps, it's going to stay together a lot better. And you don't have to do this many. That's, that's plenty to hold it. I just want the basic shape because this is green wood. You want to do this with green wood. And I want it to dry like this because that's going to form the outer part of my backpack frame. Now that I've got this curve pretty well straightened out and it is flat on this one side and round on the bottom uh, as we got rid of most of the sap wood down to the heartwood and uh, that also lightens it quite a bit. We don't want this to be a heavy frame. This is not as important uh, strength wise as these two legs. So if you get some bending and cracking, don't worry about it. Um, I actually, on the first one that I did, I think I used four different pieces of sapling before I finally got one that would hold together and give me the right bend. So a little more experience Experience, of course in teaching this but uh, anyway this looks good it's pretty light uh, I'm gonna have to do a little trimming down here but only about maybe an inch or so from this side and uh, it's it's fairly straight as you can see and I'm gonna lay this flat and uh, where it can dry out well and give it a, a day or two to uh, kind of dry out and that's another, another reason you want to remove the bark it'll dry a lot better in this way all right so this is fully dried, and I went ahead and smoothed it all down and sanded it good, and it's nice and flexible, and uh, ready to start putting our cross pieces in. In order to make the cross pieces, we just take a piece of tulip poplar, and then using a knife, uh, we just baton it, and we make two halves. After we get those split in two. We want to smooth this one side down so we have a nice flat side. Leave the other side round. That's fine. And then we want to mark this with a pencil or a piece of charcoal. And then all we do is we come in here and we just carve just these little pieces out here. These are our pins and they're just rectangular in shape. And we do that and we size it to meet the frame until we have two of them. Just basically the same, they're, they're different lengths. 
because the frame is wider at the top and it kind of narrows to the bottom. So we've got our two main cross pieces and then we're going to want one more for the bottom way down here to help hold that together and that's going to be for our tie downs. Also if we want to lash uh, some sort of a bed roll uh, to the base and so of course we're going to put these in in a mortise and tenon. We're going to drill holes so they fit in like this and then this will be a square lash at the bottom. First thing we want to do is of course figure out where we want this to go, how far we want it to the top and I'm wanting mine right about in this area give me a nice top handle and so make a little mark you know about where you want it and then put it in the center like this and then use a pencil or something and mark around it and you can see I've already done that I've got a little square marked out and I need to drill this uh, for this mortise and tenon joint so I'm going to start drilling these holes using a mouth drill that I built and uh, it's a rib bone a leg bone with a, a nail in it and uh, the top is made from an antler tip right here and then the mouthpiece that I made with a copper insert for uh, so it won't wear it out so fast Okay, so we got those holes drilled in all the sides and we've notched out the bottom as you can see here for our square notches and uh, we're going to go ahead and put these in. Uh, now the flat side is going to go toward my back so the square notch is pointing up on this particular part of the backpack frame and you want to put the top one in first. And so we'll just go ahead and I've already test fit this and we'll go ahead and put that in like this. And then the next one in here, like that. And last but not least, we want to put in our piece that we worked on for uh, making that, that square notch. All right, there you go. And that is the basic frame. Now we're going to lash it together. For lashing, I'm going to be using artificial sinew. And of course, you could use real sinew on this, but uh, this is very strong and uh, works quite well. And a lot of people use it for projects, and it's going to work well to hold this together. Uh, the nice thing about this, as opposed to uh, natural sinew, is that when it gets wet, it's not going to come apart. And so I really want this pack to be more durable in all kinds of weather. So how I'm going to start my lashes is I like to start with just a simple slip knot, just like this, and then I leave a nice tag end on this side, and on this I'm going to put a stop knot to keep it from uh, unraveling, coming loose, and uh, that will also keep this from sliding any farther because I want this tag end to tie off to. And what I'm going to do is I start right here on this pin that sticks out and I just simply pull this tight around there and then I'm going to start my diagonal lashes I'm going to go around this way come around here like this and I'm going to continue to do that and then I'll go around each side like this and back around and just keep swapping sides on that diagonal lashing. And then when I bring it back around this side, what I want to do, I've got these tag ends left, left over, that's why I left that long, and I'm just going to tie this off with a simple square knot, right over left, left over right, like that, pull that tight, and then we'll trim these tag ends off. Just trim them off close, Alright, and that is our very first lashing, 
I'm going to do that on all four sides and I'll get back with you when that's done. Okay, we've got all of these diagonal lashed on here and uh, it's nice and sturdy and it's starting to come together as a solid frame. Um, but uh, one thing that I don't want to do is I don't want these to spread apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here with the same thing I did before. Again, just a simple uh, slip knot with a stop knot and a long tag end. And go ahead and tie that. There we go. And I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to pull this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across this piece here. So all the way across and I'm going to make diagonal lashes. So I'll go around here once to get my angle started. And then I'm going to come across here and I'm going to go across this. So we've got a, a diagonal this way. I'm going to make sure I push this together and keep some tension on it. I'm going to go around the outside. I'm going to come back this way and go back the other way and again around. And then if I want to put extra tension on it, I can whip it a little bit right here, put some extra tension and pull this down tight by going around this section inside. And of course, use your, your thumb there to hold that tension in. And once I get that down pretty good, then I'll come back over this way and go around another angle. And then I'll do the same over here, uh, actually doing some frapping uh, just around the inside and pulling that line nice and tight. And that's going to keep these ends together. So I'll do this to both sides. I'll come back and I'll tie this to this tag end and then I'll show you what that looks like. And now we've got that well lashed side to side, as you can see, and frapped very nicely so that this has quite a bit of tension on it to help hold this frame together, keep it from spreading out. And that's going to make it nice and sturdy when we're carrying it so it doesn't shift around a lot. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is flip this over and then doing the exact same basic uh, wrapping. We're not going to go across it with the diagonals. We're just going to square lash this to the bottom. A lot of you know what that looks like. I've already showed you basically, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you the finished product. One thing that I want to show you uh, before I do all this lashing is when I do these diagonals with these uh, square notches is I use my slip knot and a stop knot and I'll come over both of them like this in the diagonal and then I'll pull that tight. And that stop knot of course keeps it from going any farther. Then I just simply wrap it as you would normally around and then back the other side uh, to get that good diagonal uh, that we're looking for. Just like that. Now that we've got this nice and sturdy and uh, it's pretty flat. It's got a little bit of rock to it but it's not too bad and it's going to carry well. Uh, it's pretty lightweight and uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, this is the second one that I've built, so I, I do like it uh, a lot better than the first one I did. But I want to put some sort of a um, padding on here because this is going to be against the small of my back. And for that, I'm just going to use a piece of this hair on uh, deer hide. And we're just going to wrap it around. Uh, remember, of course, the flat side is what goes against the back. This will also help protect uh, all of these diagonals from being worn. And we're just going to wrap that around there like this. I'm going to take some more of my artificial sinew, uh, which is already sized to length, and we're just going to simply tie it around there, uh, lashing it in uh, just exactly uh, as you see. This is right here. Again, I'm going to start with a slip knot and a stop knot. And I'm going to use this tenon sticking out. I'm going to pull that tight. Make sure this is overlapped properly. And then I'm just going to take this artificial sinew and I'm going to wrap it around in a diagonal, keeping this tight and pull together. And we're just going to go around and back and tie it off. And our back pad is nice and lashed on. And 
that's going to give us a little bit of comfort and also help cut down on sweat on the small of your back. So that's, that's done and now we need to move to the top. Uh, we want to go ahead and lash this as well and I have some elk hide that I'm going to wrap around here and I'll do that same diagonal wrap all the way around the top to give a nice padded handle to grab onto when I want to pick the pack up. We've got this wrapped nice and tight and uh, it's going to make a nice padded handle for carrying it around and our backpack frame is starting to really take shape. Okay, so flipping this over because again the flat side is what we want against our back, not the curved part of this wood. And so what we're going to do is we've got to put our backpack straps on here. Now what I'm using are just long strips of deer, deer skin. This is just a, a bit of uh, leather that I cut off of a hide and it is about five feet long. And what I have done is in one end I, I put a slit. On the other end I split the tails. Okay, and it is about an inch and a half wide. It's not perfect, irregular cut, but again, just cut out of a piece of deer skin. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over the top of this and we're going to feed it through the slot that we made, like this. So that it looks like that. Okay? And what that does is then that pulls from the bottom and it will tighten naturally. It's a, like a lark's head. And then we're going to lash it down here at the bottom. We're going to tie these tails off. Now, this is measured to fit me uh, because I went ahead and, and measured that. And then I'm going to do this twice, two of these. Then the other thing I'm going to put on there is I've got this strap. And a good friend of mine, Jamie Burley, made these, and uh, I was with him. We put them together just to, oops, almost dropped it there. Uh, it's just a piece of leather, and it's got some holes in either end, and it's held on, these two little pieces of leather are held on by some copper rivets. And these are going to be my backpack straps. And what I'm going to do is I'll feed these through the hole right here and down through these leather pieces here and that's going to form a nice wide strap to make this a little more comfortable to carry. I will show you what that looks like when I get it on there. So we've got our straps on here, both of them, and I want to keep them separated and I've got these little flaps of deer skin here and I don't want to leave that as it is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more, I've got a hank here of the artificial sinew and I'm just going to wrap around and lash these down and I'm going to leave a space in the middle uh, because that's going to be important here in a little bit. So we've got the backpack straps lashed on and leaving a space in the middle and then when we come down to the bottom here where we're going to tie these we're just going to take these split tails and we're going to go over top we're just going to split right around the post just like this. It looks like that and then we're going to crisscross them so this one will come over this way and this will come over this way we'll go up around the top crisscross them again and then just simply tie a knot it seems a little fiddly when you start messing with it, but it's really not that hard and you can put a pretty good knot in this deer skin. Pull it nice and tight. Alright, there we go. And that's one strap. Now we'll do the other one. Now I'm not going to show you stitching this deer hide together uh, because this took me a really long time and it would be really boring. But basically what I did, I have this very old antique awl. I keep a cork over to protect the point. And basically what I did is I took the deer skin and I folded it out. I trimmed the bottom flat. And the first thing that I did was 
I very carefully just punched holes one side to the other and then I made my stitches one by one and I used the artificial sinew and a large glover's needle like you would use for sewing leather. And so I did that all the way across the bottom and uh, just literally just in and out. I didn't whip stitch it or anything, just, just a running stitch. And then where the bag overlapped, because it was irregular, because the hide as it was tanned, of course, the edges are irregular, what I did was I actually double stitched that. And you can see that there are two rows of stitches that go all the way across. And I stitched everything that was loose on all the edges down. And that's to give extra strength. When you stuff the bag full, you don't want those stitches to rip apart. The other thing that I did was where this hide was, uh, the top of it laid as a flap, I left it irregular because I wanted that look uh, when it was all put together. So now that we turned the bag inside out or right side out, um, a couple of the things I did is I stitched another piece of the hair on deer hide and that is for my tomahawk to slide into. I also, when these flaps fold over, I trim the edges to make it a little more square because they were kind of oblong and irregular and uh, I still have a bunch of that of course left over. But this was a pretty good size hide and so uh, it, uh, it does pretty well for what it's supposed to do. Alright, now to mount it to the frame um, I stitched on, on the back side here, I stitched on some more of the leather and that is what goes in the very center of the backpack straps. I also took the uh, knife and I made some very small slits. You can see my finger right there. I made some very small holes and I made some lacing to go around that. And so that is going to lace onto the cross braces and onto the sides. So I have three across the top and I have two in the bottom and then I have two on each side. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that hold it on. So that's to keep it from just ripping and falling apart. All right, let's go ahead and mount it to the pack frame. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this right here and lash this. And just using a square knot and then I'm going to try to move that around so that it's up at the top and doesn't ride against my back. All right, and that's the first one. Next, I'm going to take some strips of the leather and in those slots that I have made, I'll push them through and then lash them around. And what I'm doing is, after I got the first one in here, uh, I'm going to tie them on the inside and uh, that will keep uh, a lot of the extra uh, tie out from being on the outside, getting snagged. Um, just keep it a little safer, keep the knot inside there. Uh, takes up a little bit of room, but it's not really that big of a deal. We've got all the lashings done. And remember, we started with the one in the middle, got the two at the top. We've got two down here at the bottom. And then we've got two on each side and that makes for a really good and strong pack. And if you remember, this pack works quite well like this. Uh, of course, this is a different frame. I put it together uh, for the video, but if you wanna watch the trip, I took a three day, two night trip with this pack and uh, I can put a link to it up here. Anyway, this is what it looks like uh, at this stage. Now, we still have a couple other options uh, that we can add to it. And one of them is a tump line. A tump line is a leather strap that goes across the top of the head, right above the forehead. And this is just an old strip of leather and it will fasten to this cross brace right here at the top. And I have knots tied for the proper length. And so these are just some leather thongs. And all I'm going to do is go around here and tie it on. And here we have the tump line installed. And the way that I tied this on is just with a bow, like you would tie your shoes on and then I double knot it. That way I can take it off or adjust it fairly easy. So that's done with that. Now, one more project. We've got to close this flap down somehow. 
For this, I just punched a couple of small holes in these ends and tied a large knot in the end of one of my leather thongs. And this goes through the hole, threads through, and tightens like that so that when I have a load, this top actually flap kind of folds over. It helps maintain its uh, weatherproofness. It's not completely watertight, of course. <laughs> but uh, then this, these strings, these leather strings, will lash down here on the bottom. And again, I just pull it down and I tie it the same way you would tie your shoe with just a bow. That way it's easy on and off and I can access the pack. And I've got my queen size wool blanket stuffed in here just for effect, but uh, as you see on the video, it holds enough gear for a, a three day, two night trip. So take the tomahawk, slide it into the sleeve, and fold this over top. And I like this because it actually helps cover the head of my tomahawk. And uh, of course that helps it to stay uh, a little more weather uh, proof there in case it would rain. And then down here at the bottom, I go under the crossbar on one and over the crossbar on the other so that I can cinch and pull it tight. And then again, as I said already, I just do a simple bow like I do when I'm tying my shoes. Just a large bow. And I'll double knot that to make sure that it uh, doesn't slip or go anywhere. And there we are. And that's what the pack looks like when it's ready to go. Now let's put it on. So again, it's just like any other pack. You don't have to use the tump line if you don't want. I'll stick it back over the top like this. Take the straps, of course, grab the handle, put it on like so. And there we have it. And it is a very, very comfortable pack. rides well. It's not super heavy. Uh, I would say it probably weighs about five and a half to six pounds when it uh, doesn't have any gear in it. But uh, yeah, this is a fantastic pack. And uh, I appreciate you all staying with me through this build. Hopefully you enjoyed it, inspired you maybe to go out and make one of your own. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. While you're down there, you'll find our waypointsurvival.com link, which is where you can sign up to take classes. You'll also find our Patreon link, which is where you can donate to support the channel. And thank you so much to everybody that has been doing that. If you want to support us in other ways, you'll also find our spring link, which is where you can buy Great Waypoint Survival branded merchandise. And of course, the proceeds from that go to help the channel and the ongoing research that we do to bring you great video content. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.